Oh, I'm leaving. Hey, hello, my YouTube friends. How are you doing? Trying to set up my camera here. Everything uh, seems to be working fine. So how are you guys doing? Today is a uh, Friday, and uh, my camera is kind of tilted. Sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, hello. Um, I'm actually here uh, in Vancouver City now. Uh, not the Vancouver in uh, in uh, Portland. I'm in uh, Vancouver of British Columbia, Canada. So this is an awesome view, and I brought my computer here, setting up everything, and uh, just want to share the view to you, for you guys. Look at that. That's awesome. And uh, right behind me, that's um, that's uh, the River Rock uh, River Rock Casino uh, Resort. Let me get my fingers. Let me, let me point. It's kind of hard to point. Here, yeah, that's a uh, River Rock Casino and Resort, and uh, that's I think that's an airport hotel. So right behind this bridge, there there's a there's an airport. Isn't this a view amazing? Isn't it nice to live here? And it's like the AC is on. Look at that. I think you can see, uh, you don't mind me showing you the view here. Wow, look at that. Uh, and over that, you see that airplane there? So the airport, it's landing over there. It comes across. So when my friend like wants to pick me up from the airport, you can actually you can see the what type of planes coming in. So you can see the plane here. And uh, you can see uh, actually Washington State from here. And I think it's over there. You can see the, the mountain. The mount, I think it's Mount Baker, the mountain there. You see the airplane, guys? Pretty awesome. Uh, just uh, wait a few minutes <laughs> to see, see this plane come in. And there you go. I think that's uh, Air Alaska or something like that. And it's really convenient. It takes like five minutes to go to the airport, and uh, <clears throat> that's a uh, face over to the other mountain here, the Mount Rouse Mountain. Look at that! Is that amazing here? But the only thing, uh, living in Canada, it gets pretty cold. Uh, so when people joke about uh, Canada in the states, I mean it's really true because lots of places uh gets pretty pretty cold. Uh, gets pretty gets pretty cold uh, during the winter times and the mountains will be covered in snow isn't that nice all the greens trees here yeah it's it's a pretty pretty uh, awesome city here and that's uh, I think behind here you can see those top sky, sky rise behind that that's a metro town and that's a metro down to shop to your drop kind of place and lots of shopping there oh i just uh it's a pity that uh i have to go back to uh, hong kong and face all the chaos and i'm not really actually looking forward to it because my kids they gotta go to school and there'll be a schedule they have to commit to so i'll, I'll turn the camera around and uh, you can see my boring face <laughs> okay there you go how are you doing there that, this thing is a okay I'll just make sure my make sure my camera doesn't fall so we're almost uh, five minutes into our live stream and I just love hey hi guys uh, sorry I'm just reading the messages yeah Beautiful mountains, yeah, and oh, you're living in Chicago, windy city. Cool. Hey, Jess, Jesse, how are you doing? Yeah, okay, yeah. I heard uh, there's a lot of news going on, and Friday afternoon, I have some. Uh, my friend has opened up some champagne, so cheers. Uh, good health to you guys, happiness, and uh, yeah, all the dreams come true. Cheers, guys. Mm. Nice and bubbly and uh, just really sweet. I think they call it sparkling wine because it's not champagne from France. 
Yep, the chaos. Greetings. Hey, Toronto. How are you doing on the East Coast? Pretty uh, far away there. I think uh, Toronto is crazy hot nowadays. Uh, it's around 34 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's, I think we're ready to get into our live stream. And uh, yeah, yeah, sparkling wine. There it is. Cheers. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. Good. Hot. Yeah. And uh, in uh, Vancouver here, when we have a conversation, we always talk about your mayor, uh, Mr. Ford. He's a kind of outstanding guy. <laughs> Lots of things uh, happening in Toronto. All right. <laughs> okay. So, as I said, uh, I have to go back to Hong Kong mainly because of work and number two the kids got to go to school and it's not going to be a good situation and school already had some emails coming in warning about the transport because people I mean the protests used to be peaceful a little bit of violence and stuff like that and it will just they'll have it in one area one city or just a place and they start up and they'll finish off wherever but now it's all chaos everything is uh, it's really sad to see it's just like all different cities it's just like a flash mob and they'll just pop up in these places and the deal is they want to be heard by the government okay fair I support that you know you got to do a protest and all that but it's not being they're not peaceful the thing is uh, in the morning the subway train buses they they stand between the doors the doors can't close uh, the subways like it's severely delayed and people got to do to do work Every, everybody got to go to work by 9 9 30 in the morning and they can't get to work and last Monday a few days ago they had a big thing that uh, you guys you know support Hong Kong you know the extradition law don't go to work go on strike yes yeah it's it, it sounds reasonable I mean yeah we should go on strike um, but the deal is, uh, some people get paid like part time and a low salary, and they gotta they gotta work. They can't just um, just say, "Oh yeah, I'm going on strike" or whatever, because uh, they are the bread and but and bread or, blah blah blah. They're the bread and butter of the of the family, the household, and they gotta pay rent. They gotta keep the bills. You know, you know nobody's gonna spare them a chance. For the bills and that that's that's no good yep 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 Jesse you're right uh, you're seeing a paper uh, pepper chemicals agents on both sides being used yep uh, but the police got more gas uh, those whatever gas they got and uh, what are they using the beanbag guns and they the sad thing they aim for the head the police there's a lot of guys got shot in the head including reporters that's that's and they get on the bridge and it's like a sniper and I don't know are you supposed to do that and which is getting the Hong Kong people mad right so let's talk about the uh, the disruption so on Monday they're trying to hold up all, all the public transportation hubs they go on the highway the freeway with with barricades and stuff, trying to stop the drivers and all that they jump out of the car they're trying to move it out I want to go to work man just leave me alone I'm I'm neutral whatever <clears throat> and they they would just uh, crowd the guy break their windows I don't know have you seen that I mean it's I'm not giving out negative news I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm try trying to be fair on both sides okay but when you start blocking the, the freeways to work and if that guy tries to get his go his way and people start beating him up and they zip tied him up and, and left him on the ground or something like that smashed all his windows do you think that's 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 protesting I I, I really don't think so it's chaos <clears throat> and uh, last Sunday there's a city called uh, North Point and there are uh, like triads again and they did a little uh, protest too they came up with uh, bamboo sticks again and start beating on the, the the protesters and the protester have their weapons too and so you see big uh, street brawling and this is not Hong Kong man this sucks I, I 
I mean, you you can. I mean, kids, everybody. It's just your family neighborhood, and you see people brawling down the street. Check, check out the internet. It's it really sucks. I mean, I, I it's just terrible. And the police didn't come up, turn up around four hours time. But the police, the report said, well, we're trying to go to North Point to the city right away. We had all the the, the riot teams already, but the students blocked the roads. They couldn't get through. Which uh, I did see on the news, they had to reverse back out because the protester blocked the roads. So that's really bad. <clears throat> yes, bankrolling. So we'll talk. Let's talk about. And people are getting paid for it, obviously. I mean, for sure. And the people behind might see them protest. Some people might follow on because there's such a big group doing all these destructive things, which is uh, very sad to hear. Here, I'm just gonna drink a little bit of awesome. Uh, Sparking wine. Mm, nice. And uh, I, I think the police, they're exhausted. And uh, they've been working overtime since like two months ago. And uh, they haven't lost it. And they're still doing, but, and they're being rough. And they're trying to, uh, yeah, I think we might have a Soros problem too, yes, in Hong Kong. And the thing is that the police, I mean, you get attacked for supporting the police, but I'm not supporting but supporting the police. But when you start, you know, causing havoc and causing problems, what do you expect? I mean, do you think you get a pat on the back from the police and say, hey, man, just go home, you know, stop causing trouble. But these guys in the... Black shirts, uh, yellow yellow helmets, uh, are call, causing problems. And yesterday, they were doing these incense burning and the the hell notes, you know, the bank notes when people die. You you burn these incense, burn these notes, and they're throwing all the police and the government, and it was such a mess, and uh, lighting things on fire. And that's totally unacceptable. This this is Hong Kong. Hong Kong is supposed to be a really peaceful and a uh, peaceful and awesome place to live in that's my Hong Kong right but it's chaos and uh, I saw the the news yesterday the American consulate has uh, issued a warning I mean to the states the whole uh, state America that there's a travel warning issued whoever's going to Hong Kong you got to be you know take caution it's not advisable so I, I think I'm not so proud to hear this kind of news coming out from from the US government because it's really sad. And the airport, there's uh, thousands of people at the airport now protesting and they are harassing, they're harassing uh, their travelers. So the travelers are tired. They've been like a long time on the plane. They come down, they want, they're not, they don't want to get involved, right? They don't want to say, yes, I support you. Don't, you don't have to be questioned when you, are at the arrival hall, right? You just want to go your way, get some rest, do whatever you need to be doing when you get to Hong Kong. But it seems that they're trying to. I saw a clip that they're trying to block a, a old man. He's holding a you know hand carry and stuff like that, and the student stand stood in front of him. That guy just pushed him away. So they just grouped on him, you know, stuck a sign at his back and just harassing him until he was on the bus or something like that or got him to miss the bus and stuff i mean that's i don't think that's protesting that's that's harassment and when you are in any place in the world you shouldn't be harassed you, you know it's, it's just uh very it's upsetting and the u.s has you know the the, the travel issue the travel warning that issued and the other thing is the airport now they they I think it's going to be shut down pretty soon because now they are not allowing people to go in without a paid ticket. I think this has been unheard of because they are causing this too much uh, trouble at the arrival hall and I think even the departure hall. And <clears throat> people are just there to get out, get in and out of Hong Kong. And they, they don't want to get involved, I think. I mean, they are involved in a way, but they don't want to be disrupted for their, you know, travel, right? 
you don't want to miss your flight because of uh, some guys standing in front of you, blocking your way, uh, wanting you to agree with whatever they say, uh, swearing at you and stuff like that. That's that's totally unacceptable, right? Okay, I'm just reading some comments here. Hey bro, millions of young uh, people are fighting for their future. This is this is their future, not yours. Can you imagine what will happen if there are people? So yes, I do agree. It's it's there. If there's no violence, it's probably not going to be the news, right? Yes, true. I I totally agree. But but when <clears throat> the support from the public, they're losing a lot of lot of uh, supporters from the public because they are really disrupting the lives of people that are trying to make a living. I mean, if you were, just say, if you want to go to work, right, you have a boss, you, you got stuff you have to do, and some guy protest blocks the road, you couldn't go to work and stuff like that. I mean, maybe your boss is nice, but some other boss might, you know, give you a tardy note or something like that. And <clears throat> it's it's no good. And think about disruption. And, and beating up people on the street. I mean, they didn't say anything. You saw it on the, I saw it on the news. I'm not making this up. I'm not pro-student. I'm not pro-Beijing. I'm not pro-Hong Kong, whatever. I'm just seeing the news. And I live, just happen to live in Hong Kong. And I have I have never seen Hong Kong like that. So, <clears throat> yes, I mean, to be seriously, if like one first week, one million people came out. Second week, two million people came out. All peaceful, right? Government just degaff, hashtag degaff. So whatever you know, you know what that means, right? <clears throat> and then they broke in, broke into the legislation office, you know, spray painted whatever they wanted, extradition law, all that. Okay, they did that, right? So they they go wreck the government stuff. But now it's just affecting people's um, people's daily lives. What happens when I go back to Hong Kong at the airport and they start harassing my family? And I, I didn't, I'm didn't. i just pushing out my luggage and they stop me, harassing me, harassing my kids. Do I, should, do you agree this should happen? Do you think it's right? I don't think it's, for me personally, I don't think it's right. But for you, I don't know, man. Because yes, it's their future, but maybe they can go violence, do violence on the government, go to the whatever place they, they can vent. But it's, I think it's, you know, it's not good to, you know, go, um, go and disrupt the public. Like my kids, they got to go to school. They got to have an education and that's their future. Not just my kids, many, all the people, the kids in Hong Kong, they still got to go to school. Right. And they, they have, they need a chance in the future too. And my kids are seeing this kind of news and they do. I asked them, do you agree with this? And the, my, my kids said, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, if there's no violence, they won't be on the news. And yeah, I didn't say anything because it's true in a way. And I, I, I do agree. And yes, uh, Craig King, students, violence will just give the government an excuse to use violence too. Uh, it's already happening. Uh, Carrie Lam came out a couple of days ago uh, saying the students came out with uh, uh, gasoline bombs. And, and start throwing like uh, they're throwing gas bombs, what do you call it? Uh, <clears throat> monitive cocktails, uh, throwing like self made tear gas to the police, and the police are throwing ga gas. So it's just going left and right, crazy stuff. Uh, yeah. So Beijing actually got Shenzhen. Yeah, setting the building on fire. That's true. They threw those gas bombs. They threw it over the wall and the police. They just threw it. And they threw those uh, on the street while uh, people driving past the road. So how would you feel if some student hits your car with a gas bomb? I mean, is that what protests, what service purpose does that make, right? Just senseless for me. <clears throat> Yeah. You know, the CCP, I mean, they they mean business. You don't mess around the CCP. It's not saying that 
you know, the CCP tell me to do whatever I want and I'll do it. I'm, 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 I have my own thoughts too, right? And the things they do to the Uyghurs or, or Tibetans or whatever, it doesn't mean I agree with that too. It's, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's just so sad to hear those kind of things happening. But for the Uyghurs, I knew that they were really causing problem, problems in other parts of China. They were terrorizing the people uh, in the train station. I was close by then. It was a few years ago. Uh, the train station I was close by. It just got machetes and stopped chopping up people, and that was really bad. And uh, they got a car, just went to Tiananmen Square and just drove in into people. So I think the CCP had to do these, uh, I think, camps to re-educate the people. Whatever. I I I, I don't necessarily agree with that I mean that's a total loss of freedom and your human right and but <clears throat> I don't I think I haven't seen any terrorist attack lately in 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 China and I don't know is it a good way of of preventing the terrorist attack in China right I I don't know right some people laugh at me ah you're pro Beijing because you got business in China Yes, I do have business in China, but I don't necessarily agree with the things that's what happening. Okay, so I hope I answer some of you. I mean, I'm kind of worked up because it's just so upsetting. And I'm here in Vancouver, it's such a beautiful place. You know, the weather is like, it's like free air conditioning around. You don't sweat the whole day. You can do whatever you like and eat the best food. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Uber Archie, I, I believe you, man. I believe a lot of Uber people are being locked up and uh, disappeared. And they're same as other people in, in uh, the Chinese people uh, in, in the southern province has disappeared because uh, they don't agree with the uh, government. And when you don't agree with the government, I think you disappear. And this is about what is about the extradition law. So if I did something really bad, you know, doing the extradition law, I mean, if I did something bad, the Hong Kong government legally can arrest me and take me to China for a trial. And the trial is like a 90.9%, they will win. So you will be convicted once you step in the border of China if you did something wrong. And when you did something wrong, it doesn't mean that other people think I'm wrong. How, how can I say this? Like in the outside, like in the West, for example, or in Hong Kong, you would do something, say something about the government, say something about the president here, the premier, the pres uh, you know, prime minister, whatever, and it's a freedom of speech. But in China, you don't have this right to criticize the government. So in China, if you do this kind of thing, you'll be arrested, you'll be in you'd be in big trouble. And how can me as a citizen fight against this kind of thing? And, and it's not saying that I agree with this kind of uh, BS, right? So that's, that's terrible. So Uber, if you say, I, uh, so you don't care, uh, I do care. Uh, what can I do about it? You know, what, what, what can I do? I, I, you know, I, I feel very, I feel very sad about it. You know, I, I, I see all this going on. I'm not running away. Hey, buddy. I'm, of course, I'm standing up for my people, man. Come on, let let's, let's see your comments. What do you mean running away from the current issues of Hong Kong? I live in Hong Kong. I have to go back soon. Okay. This is you guys, you know, you, you gotta. I, I just don't understand why you're so aggressive about this situation. If how can I stand up? So, should I just make some gas bombs and stop throwing at people and uh, attacking people with bamboo sticks? And is, is that the way how you do it? Well, I think I'm gonna, you know, block you. Sorry about that because I, I just don't agree of your, you know. Anyways, um, okay, Destiny Taiwan, Brown Eye, 
you are at a political epicenter and like many businessmen trapped between mainland access to China, manufacturing markets and the same thing, not liking China's totalitarianism. Yes, yes, this guy is a troll. I totally agree with you. Yeah, I blocked him because it's total nonsense. And I don't deal with BS because you can sit behind a computer and blah, 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 you know, just troll whatever you want. But I'm actually in this situation. I have the right to tell you what's going on, uh, the true Hong Kong that, that is affecting other people. And there's other people caught between this mess. And like, you know, would, do you think America would just come up with a travel advisory to Hong Kong? I mean, as a Hong Konger, do you feel proud when, when they come out with a travel advisory? I think that's pretty sad, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's not good news. Okay, let me read these comments. Robbie Fox, China has clear policy. Leave the policy of the government bodies. Citizens should concentrate on their daily lives, business, etc. How socialism works. Yeah, I, I, I agree in a way that's how socialism works. Stay out of politics. I'm, I'm, I'm out of politics. I don't deal with politics. Uh, I just do my own business. I care about Hong Kong people. I care about the people in China. I care about the people around the world. I care about you guys as subscribers. How can I not care, right? But um, China is just, uh, you can't really mess with China because it's just, why would you mess with China? I mean, what, what do you get out of it? I mean, especially when you do business there and uh, they're friends with you, they respect you. They, they invite you to these events and stuff like that. And it doesn't mean I support everything they say, right? So this troll really got me, got me going, buddy. Ah, oh, dear. Ah, oh, it's the first time I got, and I don't like talking about politics. I'm just talking about, it's the, the, you can see the title below. It's the US Travel Advisory to Hong Kong. And it's actually pretty shocking for me to hear this kind of news because Hong Kong will lose a, lose a lot of uh, tourists coming into Hong Kong, you know, enjoying themselves, sightseeing, shopping, tax-free, and doing, you know, whatever people like to do in Hong Kong, tourists. Is there something, you know, I, it's just sad in the airport. So Eric Warford, uh, there's a fine line between mass protests and mass chaos, between preserving freedom and maintaining order. There's simply no perfect solution to this and there's our bad apples on both sides. True, yes. So there are bad apples between in the police force, and there are bad apples um, for the pro protesters. But uh, we went to uh, we went to the protests a few times because we do, you know, we do feel how the student feels because they're just so unhappy and and uh, frustrated about this extradition law. And I just wanted to go there and check it out. But, you know, weirdly enough, it's like fighting a war. When the front people wear helmets, wear gloves, wear, they've got all the gear up, and you know they're not students. They've got tattoos. Every, I'm not saying students can't have tattoos or anything, but they're big guys. My son said, wow, Dad, these guys are huge. They're over six foot tall. They're some six two. They're a big big suckers you know and they can do a lot of damage and these guys are not the innocent one these are not fighting for whatever they believe in these guys are these are thugs and they get paid for you know doing the mess and the the legislation office the, the count i watched that all night and what those guys broke the windows broke everything and this is lead led the way to those students behind and and went upstairs and blah, blah blah and they says okay we've done our job okay let's go so those thugs had their uh, mission accomplished so they just cleared out of the building and so they let the students decide whatever they wanted to do some people just wanted to stay there some people said well the police are coming they're gonna arrest everybody for rioting charges you know rioting if you get charged for rioting uh, uh rioting uh in Hong Kong right now, it's up to 10 years imprisonment. As a student, I don't think you wanna get thrown in the slammer for 10 years. It's totally not worth it, right? Well, that's terrible. And those guys, 
I mean, protesting. Yes, Hong Kong people have has the full right to protest, to say what they want, to do whatever they, you know, they feel that's that's the right of the Hong Kong people, and that's the basic law which was signed on that the like 20 years ago, 1997, and we have 50 years of this. But I don't know what happens, you know, 2047. Maybe you'll see me here in Vancouver. Maybe you'll see me in, in California. I'll be, be staying there. <laughs> okay, let me read some uh, messages. Uh, at least China is straightforward. Uh, Hong Kong is ours. Po uh, police of ours, etc. Hong Kong is just saying we're not sponsored by America, yet all the stuff costs a lot of money, money. does it? Where does it come from? Yeah, it's true. Where does the money come from? I was talking on my last uh, stream. Notice when you see on whatever channel you watch on the news, when the protesters open up the umbrella, you would see the 7-Eleven umbrella. The 7-Eleven the umbrella is freaking expensive. It's 15 bucks US for an umbrella, and not many people buy that. But you would always see the 7-Eleven umbrella. And it's not sponsored by American company 7-Eleven. It's because the whole umbrella is really sturdy. It's made of steel. The whole thing is made of steel, okay? And the tip is really sharp, and it's a metal tip. So what the protester does, they'll wrap the umbrella up really tight and then throw it like a spear. And who's paying for those umbrellas? I mean, I bought one just I'm, – I'm so curious because I uh, – I see that on the news. I bought one and I, I figured out, oh, gee, this is a pretty hefty uh, umbrella. <laughs> okay, there's uh, some information for you guys. I heard, uh, let's read from uh, Robbie Rocks. I heard they are getting $500 per day for pinning stones and uh, participating, get you 100 plus lunch. You are sponsored. I believe so. I mean, I'll be, I'll, why? For example, like those the old people wearing blue shirts. So Hong, let's talk about the shirts, okay? Do you guys know about the shirts? There are a few colors. Obviously, the students wearing the black shirts, okay? So they are the anti-extradition law students. So they wear the black shirts. Blue shirts are pro-Beijingers. So if you wear a blue shirt, you support uh, the CCP government. You're pro-Beijing. You support the Hong Kong government. You support the Hong Kong police. So that is a blue shirt. Yellow shirt is the pressed. So in, in the states or Canada, if you see the CTV news, if you if you if you see CNN or Fox News, they all wear the the yellow shirt. Okay, yellow shirt, the pressed, and white helmets. Okay, white shirts is the triads, gangsters. So when you see white shirt people, you do avoid them because they'll they'll mess you up. <laughs> ah, Pomegranate 2000, thank you. It's a good stream. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, here, let me catch up to some comments. I love it. You guys are giving me comments, you know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, when I was in the, the States, I, I love to shop, you know, walk around and seeing stuff. And, you know, really, there's the only two major phone brands. Let's talk about cell phones. The only two major phone, phone brands is Apple and Samsung. These are uh, uh, Motorola, some Motorola. And I asked, where's Huawei? You know, Huawei? They said, we don't sell them. We're not allowed to sell them anymore. So that's kind of a pretty... <laughs> Pretty interesting news, but in Canada, I saw there's still some Huawei phones selling in uh, Canada. So I guess if you want a Huawei, you have to come up north to Canada to get a Huawei. But if uh, if they decide to uh, ban the system, you will have a blue screen with no operating system, which is uh, owned by Google, the Android system. <laughs> yeah, and. I, I did a road trip, by the way, and I just want to mention uh, I went to some campsites and stuff like that, and I had some Canadian uh, cell service and all that, and they gave you so so many gigabytes of RAM and uh, gigabytes of uh, of 
of data you can use and stuff like that. I used all of them because of the Google Maps, because you have to see the traffic, a diversion, all that, which was good. But I really, I'm not selling on anything like that, but I'm telling you, if you guys can get on in this, it's only for America only, okay, the States, you guys should really consider getting the Google phone. No, Google Fi service. Google Fi service is awesome because I went up to two gigabytes, three gigabytes, four gigabytes, five gigabytes, six gigabytes, and it capped off at 60 bucks. So I used, kept on using like 100 uh, gigabytes and it didn't throttle me on all that. And the maximum they would charge over six uh, gigabytes of data is only 60 bucks, which is awesome. And I will put a link down below on the Google Fi service uh, because when you're on the run or you data hungry and you can uh, tether your phone, your family or friends can use the data. So you'll be paying $60 max and uh, it's totally worth it. And if you don't use the data or if you just use a little bit, it'll just charge you whatever you use. So it's basically $10 uh, a, a, a gigabyte, one GB and six gigabytes, it'll top up for 60 bucks. And if you use under like one gigabyte, they'll refund the difference prorated and on your phone bill. And there's no service contracts. So after this trip, I can just cancel it anytime. Uh, and the other thing is I go to China, mainland China, communist China. I use my Google phone there too because it, there's no roaming. There's no such thing for roaming. So over 250 countries, you will be using a... Uh, uh, internet tunneling directly to the states. So your YouTube, your regular uh, apps that you use at home in the states are the same, won't be affected. You won't say, oh, Facebook's blog, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, YouTube, everything will be just normal if you're in China. So I always use this Google phone. So check out the link below. Uh, just take a look. It's, it's really awesome. And there's in the states, there's 1 million hotspots, over 1 million hotspots you can use for free anyway that's that's really really awesome so later and yes uh, talking about VPNs Google has their own VPN built in on their service so you're protected 100% for your privacy which is really important nowadays nowadays to protect your privacy right so we will just say on your phone you'll say Google Fi so all you do is just order a sim card stick on your Apple phone and it's really good uh, yeah, let me read some of the comments. Yep, so Google phone has a built-in VPN on their system, so it's really safe. <laughs> yeah, they should pay for my sponsor. Yeah, really, because I, I on the road trip, you, you really are data hungry. I mean, sometimes, like when I'm camping, you know, I don't know, have you guys went camping before? Tell me about the Wi-Fi, right? It, it really sucks. It, forget it. Forget even streaming. Uh, the, the 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 receptionist they said, you I I don't actually I'll give you the password for the Wi-Fi, but I don't actually don't know how to call it. I don't think it's Wi-Fi. Uh, maybe it's called Lo-Fi. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh that's the thing. It's so funny. So, I'll finish my Google talk. Google Fi talk here. Okay, over. Okay, so later on, we're going to go back, and I don't know what's happening with the airport, and I just don't want to be harassed there, and it's just terrible. And now in Hong Kong, when you see the news, even just now 10 minutes ago, I saw on the news, uh, because I'm subscribed, I subscribe to all these channels, so I, I get to see all these news from both sides, from the pro Beijing and from the students on from all sides of the news i'm i'm not i try not to be biased okay guys and now they would just have pro they would just pop up to one one new city pop up pop up in these towns and cause chaos which is uh terrible you know um and they just would block the roads and the harbor cross tunnel they're trying to block it every day you know the harbor cross tunnel this is the main road that goes, it's a, the toll is 
It's so popular, the Harbour Cross Tunnel, so popular. It's because it's a dollar fifty. I think it's like two two dollars fifty the toll to go. It goes under uh, underground across the harbour, but underground. And they, I think, they built this in the nineteen seventies before we had to take ferries to go across the Hong Kong Island to the Kowloon. So this is a really popular tunnel. Even right now, everybody uses it, and they just trying to block the the tunnel put throw stuff throw bricks or whatever just to stop people and the people trying to stop they'll beat him up and uh, smash their windows that's like minimum charge and and the, by the way the insurance doesn't cover you at all for these type of things and it's really really sad to to hear yeah I hope uh, I, I don't know because I have to go back to Hong Kong soon I'm gonna I'm going to be in the airport. I don't know what to say. They come to me. I said, yes, of course I support the extradition law. You know, support not to have, sorry, excuse me. I, I don't support the extradition law. We shouldn't be able to be extradited to mainland China because we have our basic law in Hong Kong. And... If I say that, I don't know, would I still get beaten up or, or some guys, you know, some thugs wear a black shirt, sunglasses, they'll come right close to you and punch you in the face and they'll just run off. Oh, great. So you get your news. Yeah. And when you watch the news channel, uh, you got to watch it from all sides. You, you can't watch it from run. It's it's same the political, you know, political channels in, in the States. You're either a CNN fan or a Fox fan, right, guys? If you watch Fox, you would think, ah, oh, gee, CNN is full of it. And when you watch CNN, you watch Fox. What are those guys? Idiots, right? So you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's so funny. Anyways, uh, I think I'm going to wrap up everything uh, on this uh, live stream. I just always like to have some opportunity to do a live stream with you guys uh, just to communicate and see one of your comments but i'm i'm happy everybody uh oh so using the freedom phone yeah freedom is owned by shaw and shaw has a i don't know yeah, you can use those wi-fi hotspots too it's pretty good yeah jesse uh very nice to see you guys uh pomegranate 2000 uh all you awesome people there perry oh the logo yes uh let me answer the question why was there a ig that's a load large attack they have a streaming program, so when you use stream with a stream on YouTube, you can use their capture device to stream. So you, hopefully, you can get a higher resolution, uh, and you have more control on your live stream. So now I'm trying to stream out of uh, 1080p to give you guys the best quality. Yeah, good luck to the youngsters in Hong Kong. I hope they can get what they want and I hope this would all end peacefully and in Shenzhen they had uh, 20,000 policemen not soldiers okay not the PLA uh, soldiers they had 20,000 policemen they had a thousand on the motorbikes like a few hundred helicopters everything anti-riot drills and all that just to show Hong Kong they mean business so I hope you know we don't have to the, the Hong Kong government doesn't request uh, the Shenzhen police, the China police, or the PLA to uh, to intervene with Hong Kong's affairs. And just to let you know, the PLA headquarters is in central Hong Kong, and it's just next to the legislation office. And just for a fun fact, the PLA uh, headquarters at Garrison doesn't have the gates. The gates are always open. So you can basically you can just charge in the compound and there's just one soldier holding a machine gun on, on the stand like that every day like a robot and and i haven't seen any students anybody trying to cross that line in garrison isn't that uh kind of uh funny <laughs> anyways yeah it's interesting so do give me a like when you see this uh, live stream i do appreciate it and you guys are really awesome and I love uh, talking to you from all different you know you guys see everything from all different angles and uh, 
and I just want to show you my point of view, uh, how I feel about Hong, Hong Kong right now. And it's just uh, very, very sad to see Hong Kong like this, you know. And yeah, and thank you, you know, you su subscribe to my channel. And for the troll, you know, I just don't know what's his problem, man. You just, you can't please everybody, you know. But uh, I'm just saying that what actually is it's coming from me. Yep. Didn't the students say they would go home and sleep in the PLA? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Jeremy, how are you? Uh, how are you doing in Ontario, right? Uh, long time, no see. And it's good. I'm in Canada. Yay, Canada. Look, and uh, let me show you the view here. It's awesome. And there's an airport right behind me here oh i think i'm overexposed anyway look at the city here beautiful and it's only uh it's like 21 degrees celsius it's really awesome look at that and that's the airport behind me and uh there's a river rock uh river rock uh casino resort if you can see it and let's see the mountains again before I sign out. Look at that beautiful mountains. It's awesome to live in an apartment here. Yeah. So I'm going to end this stream. Oh, I'm going to stretch a little bit. And uh, cheers to everybody to good health and happiness. I know I've been talking a lot, right? <laughs> so relax, enjoy, like, and share. And I'll see you guys uh, soon. And I'm going to try to put up uh, a video soon because it's, I'm on holiday with the kids and it's hard to uh, do all this editing and stuff like that. So I just want to say hi to you guys. So thank you very much for joining me this uh, evening. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.